This question is about energy and the moon. It says that the moon orbits the Earth, and it asks us to state a difference between the orbit of a moon and the orbit of a planet. And really, this is what defines a planet and what defines a moon. So, a planet, like Earth, orbits a star, like our sun. Whereas a moon orbits a planet. And that's what they want you to do. They don't want you to get into any sort of discussion about the shape of the orbit because moons and planets have quite similar shapes. The next part of the question tells us that the radius of the moon's orbit is 385,000 kilometres. And it says it takes 27 days for the moon to complete one orbit. Then it asks you, to calculate the orbital speed and give a suitable unit. Now the equation for orbital speed is v equals 2 pi r over t. Now you'll recognise that 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle and so really that's just the distance that an object travels as it's orbiting around a body. So we're going to do 2 pi and then we're going to multiply it by the orbital radius 385,000 and then we're going to divide that by 27. Now you could change that into maybe hours or minutes or seconds but because they've given us the option over which unit we use we don't have to do that we can just leave it in kilometers per day. And I think that's why it's really important to put your units in to your calculations to remind you about what the unit's going to be once you've worked it out. Now, you put that into a calculator and you will get rounded 90,000 kilometres per day. The next part of the question shows a picture of an experiment that Alan Shepard did while he was on the moon in 1971 when he hit a golf ball with a golf club. Now, this says that the mass of the golf ball was 50 grams. Now, I'm already going to think mass should really be in kilograms. So I'm going to divide that by 1,000 to convert it into kilograms. I'm going to write that just on the top. So if I was to divide 50, then I would get 0 0.05 kilograms if I divided it by 1,000. And then it says that you transferred 56 joules of energy to it. And then it asks us to state the equation linking kinetic energy, mass, and velocity. So kinetic energy equals a half times the mass times the velocity squared. And now it asks us to calculate the initial velocity of the ball. Now, this is one of the hardest equations to rearrange. Now, some people are very, very confident in maths and like the challenge of rearranging equations. Some people struggle. If you struggle, then you just need to simply learn it. So V is equal to the square root of two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass. And you can just learn that. Alternatively, you can learn how to do it. And I'm just going to show you how to do that just now. Now, the first thing that I would do in this equation is I would move the half over to this side. And so if I want to get rid of a half, I've got to multiply by two. So I get two kinetic energies is equal to the mass times the velocity squared. The next thing I'm going to do is move the mass over to this side. Now at the moment it's multiplied by the velocity, so I've got to divide it to get rid of it here and then move it over to here. And then I'm going to get two times the kinetic energy divided by the mass is equal to the velocity squared. Then the final step is to get rid of this squared, and the opposite of that is the square root. So a square root, two times the kinetic energy, divided by the mass, and I'm left with the velocity. So, now all we need to do is substitute all the values into the equation. So the kinetic energy was 56 joules, and the mass, being very, very careful to make sure that I've correctly changed it into kilograms rather than grams, otherwise I'm going to get it wrong. And then if I put that all into the equation, I'm going to get about 47 meters per second. 
The next part tells me that at the highest point, the ball has gained 12 joules of gravitational potential energy. And it asks us to state the kinetic energy of the ball at the highest point. Now, this is quite a tricky question. It's only worth one mark, but that's because what you need to do is fairly straightforward once you know how. Now, if we imagine this astronaut on the moon, just about to hit that golf ball, the golf ball is going to follow a parabola. Now, at the bottom, it has no gravitational potential energy, and it's only kinetic energy. So it's got that 56, rather, joules of kinetic energy. And then, when just before it lands, again, it's going to have that, all that kinetic energy. But at the top, it's gained, as it says in the question, 12 joules of gravitational potential energy. And that 12 joules has to have come from somewhere. We can't just have made it, because that would go against the conservation of energy, which states that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. So it's come from the kinetic energy. So in order to answer this, we need to do 56 minus 12, and that's going to give us 44. So here, the ball is going to be moving with just 44 joules of kinetic energy. And of course here, it would have slightly less gravitational potential energy, but slightly more, but still not 56. And here, it would have that exact same amount. And we know that although the ball keeps on moving this way, the ball wouldn't be moving in the vertical direction at the point just here. And we can see that reflected in the kinetic energy because it's not moving in this direction at this point, it's only moving in this direction. The next part of the question asks us to state the equation linking GPE, mass, acceleration due to gravity and height. And that is GPE equals m times g times h. Then it asks us to calculate the maximum height that the ball would reach. And so we're going to have to use this here. Now again, we're going to have to rearrange the equation. And this one's a little bit easier to rearrange because we're just going to have the height is equal to the GPE and then we're just going to divide the mass times the acceleration due to gravity. Now the maximum GPE was 12 joules and then we're going to divide it by the mass again making sure that we use kilograms and then g on the moon is 1.6 and not 10 as we might see on earth and then we put that all into a calculator and we should get it comes out as 150 meters Part E asks to suggest why the ball travelled further on the moon than it would have done on Earth. Well, on the moon, because the acceleration due to gravity isn't pulling it back down into the Earth, it stays in the, well, not really the air on the moon, it stays off the ground for longer. So if it stays off the ground for longer, it can travel this distance for longer as well. So on the moon... It stays off the ground for longer because G, or the acceleration due to gravity, is smaller than on Earth.